All right, it just filled up at the best gas station slash convenience store in the entire world, and that is Wawa. I know not everybody has them by you, but if you ever get a chance, you need to stop by one because it's pure heaven. And I don't care what other people say about these other places, mainly starting with an S, just ignore them. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. That's goodness in a building right there. So I've been riding out all day long today, enjoying this beautiful fall day. And uh, I've got a topic to talk to you guys about. And normally I don't do these type things. I kind of focus on the good things in life, right? Uh, but today I'm actually going to talk about some of the things I don't dig about this 2021 Harley Davidson Pan America Special. Hello friends, my name is Colin. I've had this bike now for, gosh, what is it, a little over a year now. It's 2021. Uh, I got close to, uh, well, my thing's down up here, about five, maybe 5,500 miles on this thing. Done a couple trips, and then I also did a video, God, I don't know how long ago, it was like four months ago, five maybe, about the top things that I love about this bike, and there are plenty. Saying that though, there are other detractors. If you're a Pan America owner, not even that, just um, a Harley owner or a motorcycle owner in general, I'm sure you're part of forums, right? So when you go to these forums, whether it be on Facebook, Reddit, or whatever type, you're going to hear mainly the problems. You're going to hear people that complain about stuff. Now, there's a lot of people that are very positive, too, but normally when you go to the forums, people want to talk about it, but not necessarily to be negative, per se, to kind of get some advice and talk about things that are going on with this bike. And so when you listen to those things, there is a lot. And I'm going to cover a couple of the things later in this video of some of the things that have happened in other bikes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head back home and I'll do a walk around of this bike. And I'll talk about what I mentioned earlier about some people, the forums, some of the issues they have. And then I'll go over kind of like around the bike and show you some of the things that I'm uh, not a big fan of. In no particular order at all what I'm gonna go through here, but I will tell you the starting is the uh, stock tires. Now these are obviously not them, these are 50-50 Anarchy Wilds. But the stock tires are the 80-20, and while it's great for road and they're great for like just hard pack gravel, once you get off and hit rocks or kind of slick grass or uh, kind of wet mud, uh, you're gonna realize those stock tires are junk. And that's why I upgraded these because if I did have the opportunity to get off and ride off road, I'd feel more planted with these. And a lot of people have asked me in the past, hey, are these good on road? I think they are. I think they're actually, I mean, they're not as smooth as the stock ones, the 8020s, but they still handle the twisties amazing and off road, night and day difference. The skid plate, okay, that is an aftermarket, that is called a Hepco and Becker uh, aftermarket skid plate, but the Harley one, I'll shoot a, I'll show you a picture right here of it. It's, it's junk. It only covers like up to that pipe right there, the first part of the pipe. And it, it just doesn't do its job. So Harley sells one. There's a couple manufacturers that sell aftermarket ones. I went with the Hepco and Becker one. Let's see if that sun's in the way there. And I made a huge difference. This is pure preference for me, but I ended up getting with the tall risers, the stock risers, and they might be good for shorter riders, but someone, I'm 6'4", uh, I had to get the tall risers. So I ended up going with A1 risers, but the stock ones that Harley come with, not good. These right here, these little protectors, uh, I think they're junk. And I know a couple aftermarket companies do sell them now, uh, but they come off really, really easy. And by design, but there have been times when I've accidentally, like when I hit the throttle, just popped them off. So while they should come off when you're hitting a tree or, or a limb, something like that, when you're off road, still, I think they're, they could be a little bit tighter. My other bike in my garage is a Street Glide Special. And taking off the tank of that thing is pretty easy, honestly. With this, it's kind of a pain in the ass. You gotta kind of get in there and there's two, there's a bolt on this side and there's one on the other side. You gotta take something out here. But once you get that off, which seems pretty simple, you actually have to reach under and unclip a couple things. You have to unclip the fuel line. And the first time I did it, I think it took me like 20 minutes, but now that I know it, uh, but the ease just to get under there, and that's where your air filter is. So the air filter is actually under this tank bag right here. And uh, to get to that is kind of a pain in the butt. I don't think Harley believes in Loctite. I've gone through here and found a lot of OEM uh, 
screws that have zero Loctite on it. I've actually only found one, and that was the one I mentioned earlier under the tank. That's the only two on the left and right side that I have found. Uh, but after I read on the forums, a couple people put in there saying, hey, uh, a couple of my bolts have come loose. I went through and just double checked all of them, made sure they were all nice and tight. And uh, come to find out, this one right here, right under the brim, bro, uh, was not tight. This was a little loose, so I went through here and tightened that down a little bit. And I went through, I think I found one more that was a tightened down, but knowing that this bike has a ton of vibration, you'd think they would have Loctite. This thing right here, the windshield. And while this has some adjustability to it, you can uh, put it in the high position, which it is right now, or you can put it in the low. Uh, I found that after you get over, I think, 80 miles an hour, this thing vibrates and it's actually not high enough. Now I know they make ones that you can go higher than the stock. The stock lights, which are this and the turn signals and that's it, not these. I actually installed these, are Denali's. Uh, but this is all you have for a brake light. Just a little thing right here. And these aren't even running lights. These are only come on when you use your turn signal. So they only flash amber. They don't even come on when you brake. The only thing that comes on right now is just the brake. So that's why I ended up adding these because these are run, brake, and turn. And then you walk up front and I have similar lights. I added those two right there that not always on the left and the right and the fog lights. But they've just had this one main light right here, and this is the adaptive light, so this only comes on when you uh, bank into a turn. And, and that's a nice feature and all, but it really isn't that bright. And I found that the lights on this uh, aren't that strong, especially at night, and that's why I ended up upgrading the lights. All right, I'm being picky here, but on the top case, you have to have the key to open it. It's not like it's a normal saddlebag, so you don't have to lock it, so you can just open it in and out. So to open this thing, you actually have to have the key to pop this thing open and the same thing to lock it down. The biggest thing I hear from forums and kind of what annoys me the most about this is the amount of codes that you have on this. Now I just cleared these codes about, what, about a week ago? And now I already have five codes on here that are probably, if I hit it, they're historical. And I can get, yep, sure enough, that one right there is historical. So I just have to go through and clear that like I'm doing right so, and then done. All right, turn the bike off because I don't want to drain the battery. Now with these codes, they're annoying as hell. And I've had this bike, I think done like four or five times now where I've taken it in and got the uh, software flashed. And that's, you know, Harley will say they got an update. And for the most times, you know, the little annoyances that you have, they fix these little bugs and you're going to get a buggy system your first iteration out. But it seems like it's excessive. It seems like these these uh, codes that have been happening on this thing are super excessive. And now you can still ride the bike without a problem. And there was another time where I just got this upgrade. You ever get an upgrade on a phone or an app, you know, like when you update your apps and everything and you go back and say, I liked it the way before. You know, for those Cena users, if you use a Cena, you'll know what I mean. Cause every time it seems I update the Cena, it's worse. Uh, and that's what happened to me on this. And I've heard that in the forums too. Uh, like, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But they had a code where once I got it all fixed, my adjustable ride height or the automatic ride height, whatever that thing is that drops it down two inches when you sit on it, um, wouldn't work. So I got home, called the dealership, I'm like, uh, this thing isn't lowering like it should. And come to find out a little bit later that there was a coding issue for the first people that uh, got that software upgrade and I was one of the ones. Come to find out, I think there was a zero and a one transposed. The programmer at Harley, I guess, was uh, had a little too much to drink the night before. But anyway, it, it got fixed and life is good again. But it is kind of annoying with all those codes. A couple more things and I'll talk about what I'm also hearing on the forums. I'd be remiss because everybody I talk to, I don't think there's one person that says, hey, I love the side stand. Oh, you can't even see it because I'm dipped down in this nice soft earth here. Um, it's, it is under there. Uh, this side stand blows. It's a horrible design. Um, and, it's, and it's hard to tell because right now, like I'm in an angle or kind of a decline right now with this bike. But like whenever you come to a stop, you actually have to lean the bike over to the right a little bit, probably about maybe a foot now, maybe that's a little excessive, maybe like six inches to get that thing down. And then once you get it down, it doesn't feel 
stable. It doesn't feel like reassuring. Like on my street glide, I put it down, I feel 100% confident. With this, and it's attached right to the bike, so it's not even separate. So a lot of people have bitched. I, I guarantee probably, hopefully Harley listens in the later models that they fix that design on the side stand because it is annoying as hell. Let's see here. Look, I feel like I'm doing a treasure hunt here. Um, under here, see that plate? So I ended up doing a plate, I can't even see it, um, that widens kind of the footprint right there because before it was like very little and especially off-road like a dirt just like this, you got to be stable. Battery's pretty weak on this bike and it's like sometimes it has voltage issues when you're trying to turn this bike on and for the most part it has worked but you need sometimes like I think 12 volts if I'm not mistaken to turn on this bike and sometimes you'll get like 11.5, 11.4. And if you turn this bike on more than a couple minutes and just leave it there, I mean, I know they have an accessory mode, but if you uh, just turn it on, you're gonna drain your battery pretty quick. Some of the things I've heard on the forums that not necessarily have happened to me on this bike are fuel pumps that sometimes can be bad, uh, cam tensioner issues. A good friend of mine who actually I've rode with before had some clutch slippage issues. Uh, so there have been some other people that have brought up some good points about this bike. Now, I haven't had that overall. I think my biggest issue was, I didn't even bring it up, was this uh, radiator hose was too close. That one right there. I think I was one of the first ones at my dealer that told him that. Whereas before, this was like right on there, was burning a hole in the uh, radiator hose right there. But that's been fixed since then. And then I've had some codes, uh, but nothing major, nothing that has prevented this bike from running. I mean, overall guys, while there are some little idiosyncrasies that I have and things that annoy the hell out of me, overall it's a solid bike. And, and I, I'm glad as hell that I bought it. I mean, there's always gonna be issues with every bike, but I also at the same time wanted to get out there and share these with you and see if anybody else is having similar issues or, educate people on some of the little things that are happening with these first and second year um, motorcycles from Harley Davidson. So that's all I have for today. Hopefully this video was helpful. Now get out there and ride. Be well, and I'll talk to you guys soon.